So here we are, we are calculating the sum to 4. Let's click on visualize execution and see this in action. I get an error message. It says stop since stack has 30 functions on it. Now, I don't yet know what a stack is, but 30 functions? How on earth can there be 30 functions? There's only one function. Of course, it's calling itself. And here I see those calls all the way down here. But look, it looks suspicious. Here I'm calling sum2 with the argument 4. Here I'm calling sum2 with the argument 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. Oh, oh, this does not look good. This is certainly very, very strange. And now I can see what might be happening. This is an example of what we call infinite recursion. We have said that to solve the problem n, you first check what the answer is for n minus 1. But we can't do this forever. It would be like flipping backwards in a book forever and ever and ever, but at some point, that book is going to have a first page and then we cannot look back any further. The way we have written this, it's as if we had a book with infinitely many previous pages that we could look up. So let's try and solve this problem. So the basic idea is that you can look up the answer to a sub problem in the same book or using the same function, but you can't do this forever. If you do, you will get infinite recursion. So the way we avoid infinite recursion is by including at least one base case. And a base case is just a fancy way of saying, well, in this special case, we won't look up the answer. We will solve the problem directly. Now, we may solve the problem by appealing to a different helper function. That is allowed. But we won't call the same function recursively because that would lead to infinite recursion. So we must have at least one base case. For now, the recursive functions we will see will have exactly one base case. But in general, there could be multiple situations where you decide to solve the problem directly. So the analogy here is with the book, there is no previous page that has the answer. So you must answer this question directly without appealing to previous pages. So this is our uh, sum2 function, which is buggy. It has infinite recursion. In my IDE, I have highlighted this uh, piece of code. Now, let me ask my generative AI to assist me in fixing this problem. In GitHub Copilot and indeed many other generative AI tools, you can chat to your code. So you can open up a little chat window, very similar to chat GPT, but all this is part of your IDE. And by highlighting a certain segment of your code, you are directing the, the assistant's attention to this piece of code. So when I open up my chat interface, I just say add a base case. Now notice the term base case is a technical expression that you and I now know. Remember that if you use technical expressions correctly, then your generative AI understands very quickly what you're trying to do. I call this technical prompting. Now, this is not the same as prompt engineering, which you will hear a lot of people talk about. This is simply saying that if you understand the vocabulary, the words and the concepts associated with something specific in your domain, and you use those words in context correctly, then your AI 
understands very quickly using a very short prompt what you want. So all I have done is highlighted the relevant code and said add a base case. And my generative AI now has all the information it needs to help me. It says to add a base case to this function, you need to include a condition that stops the recursion when n reaches 0. And here is the updated code. As you can see, they have added a base case. We check if n is equal to 0. And when n is equal to 0, we do not call the function recursively. Instead, we directly return 0. And that means the only way we can come to this last line where we are calling the function recursively, the only way we can come to this line is when n is not 0. So in the base case, when n is 0, we directly compute the answer. Notice that we write the base case first. It's like a guard or a check and it says, I'm first going to check the base case and only then will I call the recursive case if I find out that the base case is not true. We have seen code written in this style previously where we handle some special cases uh, first before handling the general case. That's exactly the structure that you will see in many recursively defined functions. We first handle the base case in case there is more than one base case, you might have another if before the last statement where you handle a second base case. And then right at the end, you handle the general case. Let's now see how this modified code runs on Python Tutor. <laughs> 